Hello and welcome back. This is Double O Debbie, and this is episode 89 of my diary 21.18 Let's Play. <laughs> and today we're going to go over all the stuff I just did for Pneumatic Craft <laughs> um, because I realized um, after I was done recording that uh, my computer had restarted and messed up my OBS settings and so I didn't have sound <laughs> didn't have sound the whole time and I never noticed until the end so uh, let's go see what I <laughs> I did uh, basically I started pneumatic craft and I built a little pressure chamber in here with the input and output and a compressor, and a charging station. Um, yeah, it's actually losing power or losing pressure. Uh, but yeah, it is currently making some some more compressed iron. Still got eight more to put in there, and then of course it's going to lose more uh, pressure. Oh, there we go. I think it just took it in. Yep. All right. And then after setting this up, it wasn't too terribly bad because they changed the recipe uh, for the pressure chamber walls. They used to take a lot, a lot of uh, compressed iron. Now it's mostly stone. Uh, like just a bit of iron and some stone and you get the compressed stone and then you take the compressed stone and you combine it with uh itself to make the pressure chamber walls um so yeah it was a little bit easier plus you get these pressure chamber interfaces right off the bat you have the ability to make them and and use them so you don't have to break the blocks, which I really liked. <laughs> um, yeah, so got this. And then I realized in order to get to the PCB um, that we really needed to uh, do this Amatron tablet uh, so that we could process the the plastic here I guess is uh, <laughs> we need the molten plastic and I don't know I guess we have to make this thermo pneumatic processing plant here and put the plastic in there so I don't know how to make the plastic you got to take biodiesel so we have to try to figure out how to make biodiesel, um, the fluid mixer, ethanol, and vegetable oil. Hmm, ethanol, industrial fermenter. Oh, dude, there's no way to. You can get ethanol by squashing corn seeds or potatoes or melon oh no <laughs> um, i'm gonna have to get an industrial farm now uh, so i can get all the seeds uh, it looks like not everything counts so we got corn how much does uh corn itself gives 120 ethanol if that honey bottle gives 250, sugar cane gives 80. So corn is definitely better. Um, and corn seeds uh, can, it's like any corn seed, uh, can give you 80. Uh, so that would be pretty cool. Maybe we just set up a big, a big corn field and make ethanol. <laughs> um, oh yeah, 
But uh, to get the oil, it's pretty cool. I guess I could have scooped it up with a bucket because there wasn't that much. Um, I made this little gas lift and a liquid hopper, just like it says in the book here. Um, and then I put a air compressor on the side to give it some juice and it sucked everything up and there's still a little bit of room in here so i guess i got about 42 buckets because this one's full 32 and uh the little hopper is full with 10. and i got another little puddle right here <laughs> if, if that's not enough uh plus i've seen like just tons of oil around everywhere you can see here's one down here there's three oil really close by on the other side uh some more further away uh looks like maybe there's some over here and here too uh just tons of oil everywhere uh unfortunately it's not like a very big spot of oil but um I read that they could possibly uh, have bigger deposits underground. Uh, and mentioning that I really need to pay attention to whether or not it's day or night. Um, yeah, so there is a an item that you can use to help you find uh, the oil. Let's see, a seismic sensor. It's highly recommended. Uh, and for plastic and lubricant. Uh, so we need to refine it into high quality fuels. Uh, so we do need ethanol. But that doesn't have anything to do with the oil. Uh, what do you combine the ethanol with the oil? Is that how you get Let's see, plastic? Let's just put the plastic sheet over there. Uh, so that will get us in-world solidifying. You take a bucket of molten plastic and put it in the world. It hopefully will solidify into plastic. Uh, but this says biodiesel. So we have to make biodiesel or LPG. What is the difference? What is the difference between biodiesel and LPG? LPG, what is this? A refinery. This is taking crude oil and you get diesel, kerosene, gasoline, and LPG. Or uh, you get four diesel and two LPG. Or you get two diesel, three kerosene, and two LPG. So it looks like when you refine the crude oil, you get these different things. So we're going to need a refinery controller. Um, you do that. Oh, refinery controller. And, oh wait, there's a refinery output. Uh, so this will probably be some type of multi-block structure. Let's do this. Refinery. Uh, yeah, okay. So refinery, controller, and output. Um, all right, let's see if there's something about the refinery. I 
I don't see anything about a refinery. Uh, base concepts. Okay, compressors, tubes, manufacturing components, machines, tools, logistics, pneumatic craft armor, mob spawning. Um, let's look, I guess, at machines. Would it be under machines? We already saw the liquid hopper. If a dispenser upgrade is inserted into the liquid hopper, it will suck any liquid block at the input side and it will dispense thousand millibuckets of any stored liquid at the output side. This can be used, for example, as a water pump. Nice. Uh, we also saw the gas lift. The gas lift is a pump. It uses pressure to decrease the density of a fluid to force it upwards. When pressurized, it extrudes drill pipes, which you must provide downwards until it hits any fluid block, at which point it will pump it. This makes it perfect for oil extraction as oil might be deep underground. Uh -huh. Any solid block in the way will be broken without yield. Breaking block uses up air. This is a very small amount for soft blocks like dirt or sand. Uh -huh. Oh, so you can you can extract your drill pipes. How do you do that? Uh, pressure, problem, status, mode. Retract drill pipes. Yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I love learning new things. Awesome. So now I could move it over if I wanted to, but I, I have a lot of oil here. It's probably not very much in the long run, but my tank is almost, my, my hopper here is almost full. So once I use all this up, I guess I can make another. So I really don't like it that it doesn't show how to make a refinery. Maybe it's under uh, manufacturing. Ah, oh, here we go. Refinery. The machines and systems used to produce components to build other pneumatic craft or pressurized machines and tools. The refinery is a multi-block machine which uses heat to refine oil into various fuels. It starts to work at 100 degrees Celsius. The higher the temperature applied, the faster it refines. The fuels that can be produced are sorted from lightest to heaviest. LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, gasoline, kerosene, and diesel. The refinery is a multi-block structure placed down a refinery controller, then stack two to four refinery outputs on top or beside the controller. Different multi-block sizes give different yields, given 10 millibuckets of oil as input. Uh, you could have two outputs and get LPG and diesel, three outputs get LPG kerosene and diesel, or Four outputs get LPG, gasoline, kerosene, and diesel. So it looks like you always get LPG and diesel, but depending on your outputs, you can also get gasoline and kerosene. Which, um, I guess it, it never changes your LPG, but the amount of diesel you get does vary. Um, so I mean, the first one you get four millibuckets of diesel, but then you change two millibuckets of diesel to three millibuckets of kerosene, or 
you change two millibuckets of diesel to three millibuckets of gasoline and three millibuckets of kerosene. I don't know what you could use all of this for, but the LPG is used to make liquid plastic and the diesel is used to make lubricant for speed upgrades. So we do definitely want that. So what is the gasoline and the kerosene for? Uh, the refinery will work with a comparator. An attached comparator will output a signal strength of 15 when the refinery has work and zero if not. It has work when there's oil to refine and space in the output tanks for the refined products. This can be used to automate switching off the air supply to a vortex tube, for example, to save air. Since the refinery is a multi-block with many faces exposed to the air, it can lose heat quite rapidly if not well insulated. Therefore, it's strongly recommended to cover all unused spaces of the multi-block to maximize efficiency. Note that any non-heat conducting blocks can be used, including semi-solid blocks like slabs or trap doors, but thermal lagging is especially recommended. You could use a vortex tube to heat the refinery or place hot fluids, lava, or blocks next to any refinery blocks. Note that such fluids and blocks will get used up the heat gets drained. So you may wish to find a way to automate the production and placement of those resources. Whoa. And there's our refinery output and our refinery controller. Um, so I wonder what other blocks you're supposed to use. Uh, in the multi-block structure, is it just the the output or the, the outputs in the controller, and that's it? And you surround those uh, okay, okay, man, it's nighttime again. That's all right. Um, let's go inside. <laughs> so that way, if I get distracted again, I'll at least be safe indoors. Um, so a refinery controller. Let's, um, let's do a little bit of automation here and maybe make some of these pieces like the stone slabs, uh, which kind of take this uh, reinforced stone, but if we could teach it this recipe, that would help a lot. Um, and then this one. So it would automatically make the slabs for me and then maybe make this small tank. That's regular glass. That way it can just make this whole doodad for me, right? <laughs> and then I can then just ask for those. Oh, I already did that. So so refinery controller. Uh also want to, I guess, go ahead and make this refinery output. Anything different for it? Nope, I should be able to make everything in that particular class. Yes. Let me scroll down. And now we can just get there we go. Now it showed up. Refinery output. So let's go ahead and make the four just so we can get all of them. And then the controller. I don't really know. <laughs> this is something I've never built before in 
uh, mine factory in, in pneumatic craft before. Uh, it's completely new. Uh, so where do we put this? Um, um, I really can't put it. Let's go put it like down here, I guess. <clears throat> I do have like a little wall over here. Um, it is. Is that a multiple? It looks like it is. Problem. Well, fluid six of 12 block faces are exposed to the air, which wastes heat. Ensure no neighboring blocks are air blocks to insulate the machine for better performance. Okay, so maybe if I. Is that a little bit better? Two of the 12 block faces. So maybe if I put that there. Awesome. So I can kind of cover that up. I guess it would be better if those were lava or something, uh, but I don't know. Uh, temperature, 18 degrees. How do you, oh, heat. This machine requires or produces heat. Heat can be applied by placing a block that generates heat next to this machine. Think of a vortex tube, fast but requires power. But also lava, fast but solidifies, and torches, very slow. A vortex tube. I have power. Okay. What is the vortex tube made of? Vortex tube. A oh, vortex tube. It looks cool. Oh, yes. Uh, let's make some of these. <laughs> um, oh, apparently I need some more pressure tubes. So uh, let's go teach it how to make some pressure tubes and these new little doodads. Uh, the vortex tubes. So we need the pressurized tube, this regular glass, and then this doodad. There we go. And now I should be able to get this little guy. All right, let's kind of figure out. Where would be the best places and how many of these do I really need? All right, so let's just get a few of them, like 20. 20 sounds good. Hopefully we have enough uh, steel for that. So let's do this. Doot, doot, doot. Uh, a doot back here. I, I don't know that it's needed up there. Oh, look, that one's like red. Oh, I think it's facing. I don't know if, if it needs to be facing a certain way. This. Uh, here. Uh, one over here. Oops. I might actually... There. Oh, no, it's not going anywhere. Okay. Oh, actually, I think I want that there. Boop, boop, and boop, boop. Does that look right? Now, how am I going to put power up this? 
Um, I guess if I... I don't know how these guys work together. If I did that... And... Yeah, there's one right there. If I just kind of do that, connect that together, maybe I can come back here and put one there. And like that maybe, it should connect them all together except for the two on the top and i don't know that they oh that was perfect so oh no yeah i'm missing the one like right here i need one more <laughs> i need one more so there that should all be physically connected one to the other. At least I don't really know. <laughs> don't really know if that's necessary, but uh, hopefully it will just work. And no, of course it doesn't connect. Oh, it's got to have it's got to have pressure, not power. Okay, this is no good. It's not good. Okay. Uh, and I wonder, do these need to be facing a different way? Are they? No. Uh, so I guess let's get a, an air compressor. Air compressor. I thought I taught it the bricks. Oh, this is the reinforced bricks. It takes uh, a different recipe for that. You gotta like teach it the reinforced bricks. Okay, let's teach it the reinforced bricks. Boom. And then we should be able to teach it this air compressor recipe as well. Alright, give me an air compressor. Um, there we go. Now it showed up. Hopefully this works <laughs> and we can start processing some of that. I mean, how do I even pick it up? Did it just go? Uh, yeah, it did not connect. Hmm. Uh, maybe we need some tubes. Pressure tube. How did those connect up to these? Do they don't connect do they connect to the side oh they do uh-huh so i wonder if that is okay if i put my thing down here all right okay that looks better now it's not making the sound Uh, oh, it's building up pressure. There we go. It's super duper fantastic. Okay, so is this doing the thing? Now, are all of those connected? Um,
Do I have to run pipes to each one of these? That one and that one are connected. Uh, not so much over here though. And not so much back here. So I wonder, do I need some more pipes? Boop. Now it's got pressure. Oh, man. I thought that they would just connect all up together. Uh, this doesn't even. Oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how to. Get all of those connected. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. Let's kind of get a little bit of an area back here so I can see what's going on. Yikes. That kind of, oh. Uh, I'll have more room soon um, ish. Uh, this one's got 10 bars of pressure, so it's connected some way. So all of these back here have 10 bars of pressure. Awesome. Okay, so. I've got to connect, I guess I should put one more here, here, and here. So three. Maybe I need to do a little bit more connecting. And you. So one here, here. Here and I think that should connect it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, this one right here still does not, and, and this one in front. Hmm. So maybe in order to connect those, since this one. Right here is not an actual block, so it doesn't connect to here. So we might need to put blocks here and here as well. So two more of those. At least I hope this works. <laughs> okay, so here and here. Aha. Uh, nope, still zero over here. Maybe it's just taking it a while <laughs> to reach over to it. Uh, maybe if I ran my pipes all the way around the base, uh, it would connect everything. Uh oh. Why, 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 why? <laughs> Oops, uh, do I need some more fuel now? Um, okay, let's, 
let's go ahead and get the last two pipes. Oh, I'm missing. I used up all my iron already. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try to finish this up off camera because I need to make some more uh, compressed iron. <laughs> So yeah, I'll go ahead and end the episode here and I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.